Hello, great friends. I hope you are doing great. IBM is here to bring you with the, uh, to bring you the last episode of Waves and Superposition. This is Multiple Choice Questions, Cambridge AS Physics 9702. We are dealing with the paper one, Multiple Choice Questions, and without wasting any time, I want to take you to the last episode of Waves and Superposition. So let's go to the document. I think in episode seven, or in part seven, we stopped on uh, at around this page here. I think this is page uh, 250. 150. And I want us to start with this page, uh, 151. So without wasting time, let's start. Um, the diagram shows the two sinusoidal waves. So we see displacement against time, displacement against time, displacement against time. At time t equals to zero, the waves are in phase. At t equals to zero, the waves are in phase. At which time is the phase difference between the two waves? At which time is the phase difference between the two waves, one over eight of a cycle. At which time is the phase difference between the two waves, one over eight of a cycle. So to begin with, to begin with, let's try to establish um, how many cycles are demonstrated here in a time of uh, 18 seconds. Let's start with the first graph. For here, for the first graph, when t is 18 seconds, at t equals to 18 seconds, at t equals to 18 seconds, at t equals to 18 seconds, so here we have, uh, this is one, this is one, two, uh, this is three, and uh, I think these are four, four, four cycles. At equals to eighteen seconds, we have four cycles for this for the for waveform P. Then at equals to eighteen seconds, we have uh, this is one, that is two, that is three, that is four, and a half. So at equals to eighteen seconds, the first difference between the two waves is going to be four. Because one is four and a half, another one is another one is four, so it is going to be four point five minus four, which becomes a zero point five uh, of a cycle. So that is zero point five t. So the first difference is going to be actually half a cycle. This is actually half a cycle. So after t equals to eighteen seconds, we are seeing that the first difference is half is half a cycle. Then at t equals to the unknown time, so at t equals to unknown time, let me call it x, we want the phase difference to be 1 over 8 of a cycle. So we now we are now going to just cross multiply because I now have two equations. I simply have two, uh, two equations to deal with. At t equals to x, the phase difference is 1 over 8, a cycle. And at t equals to... Um, at t, at t equals to 18 seconds, the phase difference is a half a cycle. So let's just do a simple comparison here. At t equals to 18 seconds, phase difference is a half a cycle. And then at t equals to a time which is known, I'm calling it x, we want the phase difference to be 1 over 8. That is an eighth of a cycle. So at which time is the phase difference between um, the two cycles, the two oscillations of a cycle, between the two oscillations, one over eight of a cycle? So let's just cross multiply because we just compare these two expressions. And if we compare these two expressions, you notice that I will have that x is going to be equal to 18 times one over eight, then divide by a half. 
So if we compare these two expressions, if at t equals to 18 seconds, the phase difference is 1 over 8. The, the phase difference is an eighth of a cycle. And at t equals to the unknown, uh, at t equals to the unknown time, then the phase difference is 1 over 8 a cycle. Then what is that time? Uh, what is that time? X. Relatively, if you are poor at mathematics, you can just say, okay, uh, for 18 seconds corresponds to a half a cycle. And then X corresponds to 1 over 18 of a cycle. So you now cross multiply those two relationships. You just simply cross multiply. I'm just cross multiplying. So you have 18 times 1 over 8 divided by a half. Then we check with our calculator. 18 times um, 1 over 8. Then divide by uh, a half, which is 0 0.5. And that gives us 4.5. So x is going to be equal to 4.5 seconds. Therefore, our answer is going to be B. Okay. A sound wave is set up in a long tube closed at one end. The length of the tube is adjusted until the sound from the tube is loudest. That is, resonance has occurred. What is the nature of the sound wave in the tube? Remember, in the tube, we have a sound, and actually, I've mentioned sound, which is longitudinal. So it, we can't talk about transverse anyway. So it is longitudinal. But in a tube, when the loudest sound is heard, we have resonance and a stationary wave is set up. Therefore, it is not going to be a progressive wave. There are two longitudinal progressive waves which have overlapped by the time we hear the loudest sound, so resonance has occurred. Therefore, it is longitudinal and stationary. Two light sources produce visible interference fringes only in a certain circumstance or in certain circumstances. Which conditions enables visible interference fringes to be formed? Visible interference fringes to be formed. Of course, if they are visible, then they must have wavelengths in the visible range. That is, uh, they must have a wavelength in the re visible region of the electromagnetic spectrum. So using incoherent sources, that one does not form interference patterns. Using one light source, which is polarized at right angles to light from the other, that one does not produce inter visible interference fringes. One light source cannot... Uh, cannot produce a visual interference fringes uses using sources from which the light does not overlap of course if there is no overlapping then there is no interference so the answer is going to be a using white light source because white is having uh, the range the, the the wavelengths from red up to violet which are visible to the human eye so that means this uh, using white light source a white light source will it will enable visual interference fringes to be observed to be formed the diagram shows a square wave trace on the screen of a cathode ray oscilloscope. A grid of one centimeter squares covers the screen. The time base is set setting is 10, 10 milliseconds per centimeter. What is the approximate frequency of the square wave? So let's just look for one cycle. I want you to notice that from here, this is one centimeter, and if a wave starts from this point, by the time we come here, we have completed a cycle, so we are starting another one. So it's like a one and a half a cycle, one and a, actually one and a half a cycle are fitting in one and a half a cycle are fitting in one square, and one and a half a cycle, one and a half a cycle are fitting in one square. So one, one plus a half of a cycle. are fitting in one square, which is one centimeter. And one and a half is the same as three over two of a cycle. Three over two of a cycle is represented, is fitting in one centimeter. That means one cycle is going to be the reciprocal, which will be two over three centimeters. So one cycle is going to be represented by two over three centimeters. So now let's find the frequency. So uh, frequency is equal to 1 over period, which is equal to 1 over the length, representing 1 cycle times the time base setting. 
So the length representing one cycle is 2 over 3 in centimeters. The time base setting is 10 milliseconds per centimeter. So the frequency is going to be 1 divided by length, which is 2 over 3, then times 10, then times 10 power negative 3 to change it to 2 seconds. So we shall check with our calculator. I will start with the denominator. Uh, in the denominator, I have 2 times 10 exponent negative 3. Then I will divide this by 3. So 1 divide by 1 divide by the answer, that's 150. So this is giving us a frequency as 150 hertz. And since this is an estimate, the value which is very closest to 150 hertz is most likely going to be um, the, the most appropriate value of frequency. Therefore, our answer is going to be B. Electromagnetic waves from an unknown source in space were found to be significantly diffracted when passing through gaps of the order 10 power negative 5. At this point, you must be having this in mind that 10 power negative 5 is approximately infrared radiation. Which type of waves are they most likely to be? So, Menera's mother is visiting Uncle Xavier's garden. And we said on the left of on the left of visible spectrum we have red, which is seven times ten power negative seven in meters. On the right hand side of visible the visible region we have violet, which is four times ten power negative seven meters. So ten power negative five is actually on the left hand side where we when I add ten power negative two negative seven plus two gives me ten power negative five. 10 power negative 5 is the next region which is infrared. Therefore, our answer here is going to be infrared. Using monochromatic light, interference fringes are produced on a screen placed a distance D from a pair of slits of separation A. The separation of the fringes is X. Both A and D are now doubled. What is the new fringe separation? So for, uh, for uh, a double slit, for a double slit, because it's a pair of slits, we know that lambda is equal to Ax divided by D. So they have told us, uh, using monochromatic light, interference fringes are produced on a screen, plus a distance D from a pair of slits of separation A. The separation of the fringes is X, that is for the first condition. Both A and D are now doubled. So the wavelength has not changed. A has been doubled, so it is twice A. Now I'm going to call the second value of X, I will call it X2. Then D is also doubled, so this is going to be twice D. So you notice that um, 2 has cancelled. Remember where there is where there is um, A over, or I can make X here the subject. X is going to be lambda times D over of A, where there is lambda times D over A, I will put there X. So 2 has cancelled. Still, this means that X2 is equal to lambda times D over A, which is the same as X. So the answer is still X. Diagram 1 shows a ripple tank experiment in which plane waves are diffracted through a narrow slit in a metal sheet. Diagram 2 shows the same tank with uh, a slit of greater width. In each case, in each case, the pattern of waves incident on the slit, the pattern of waves incident on the slit, and the emergent pattern are shown. Which action could would cause the waves in diagram one to be diffracted less and so produce an emergent pattern closer to that shown in diagram? So notice that the wavelength is the same, the way when you compare the wavelength is the same, but we want uh, the pattern, this pattern here to be closer to this one. Okay, number one, increase the frequency of vibration of the bar. So increasing the frequency because frequency is inversely proportional to wavelength. If we increase the frequency, we make the wavelength smaller. And when, if the wavelength becomes smaller, if the wavelength becomes smaller, it means it is far smaller than the size of the gap. 
then of course the diffraction becomes less pronounced the bending becomes less pronounced and therefore we should we should be approaching this diagram here therefore the most appropriate answer here would be increasing the frequency increasing the speed of the waves by making the water in the tank deeper this does not really affect uh, does not affect the frequency neither does it affect the wavelength therefore it does not affect um, the diffraction pattern reducing the amplitude of vibration of the wave that one just affects the amplitude just affects the intensity reducing the length of the vibrating bar that one does not affect the pattern of diffraction shown there the diagram shows how the displacement of a particle in a wave varies with the time what which statement is correct okay so uh, we first of all establish that the uh, displacement, maximum displacement is 2 cm, so the amplitude should be 2 cm. That means D is saying amplitude is 4. I mean C and D are saying amplitude is 4, so those ones are going to be incorrect. Then we have time on the x-axis, so we can establish the period. Uh, the period is 4 seconds, but I don't think there is period here. Okay. So the wave has an amplitude of 2 centimeters, which is true, and it could be either transverse or longitudinal. That is very true. We can represent transverse waves or longitudinal waves using the same displacement time graph. Therefore, the answer could be A. The wave has an amplitude of 2 centimeters and must be transverse. That's not true. It can also be longitudinal. We can represent long, uh, longitudinal waves also with a displacement time graph like that, even though the particles for longitudinal waves uh, vibrate parallel to the direction of propagation of the wave. Um, there are points of maximum pressure and minimum pressure, which can be converted into a displacement time graph as this one here. That's why we have um, antinodes and nodes every time. A stationary wave is produced by two loudspeakers emitting sound of the, the same frequency. When a microphone is moved between X and Y, a distance 1.5 meters, six nodes and seven antinodes are detected. No, no, note that there is always, uh, if we have, um, okay, let me maintain this. What is the wavelength of the sound? So let's just look at this and establish the wavelength. The distance between two successive antinodes is always half wavelength. The distance between two successive antinodes will be half wavelength. So this is um, this is one half wavelength. This is two. This is three. This is four. This is five. This is six. So six times half wavelength is equal to 1.5 meters because they say that x and y they are antinodes there are six nodes and seven antinodes so the distance between two successive antinodes is half wavelength but those that distance is appearing six times this is one two three four five six so I said 6 times half wavelength is equal to 1.5. So it means the wavelength lambda is going to be 2 times 1.5 divided by 6. 2 times 1.5 divided by 6, that is 3 divided by 6, which is 0 0.5. So our answer is going to be A. This is 0 0.5 meters. Which electromagnetic wave would cause the most significant diffraction effect for an atomic lattice of spacing 10 power negative 10 meters? So you must look for a radiation whose wavelength is very close to that, and, I, and we know at this point that that is approximately X-rays. So Rumenera's mother is visiting Uncle Xavier's garden. So here in the visible spectrum on the left, we have 7 times 10 power negative 7 for red. And on the right hand side we have 4 times 10 power negative 7 meters for violet. So if I subtract, I go subtracting 2 on the power of 10, so I have the next one will be 10 power negative 9, that is approximately ultraviolet. When I continue it is 10 power negative 11, that is approximately x-rays. 
So after 10 power negative 9, most likely it must be x rays. Therefore, 10 power negative 10, this is going to be x rays. The amplitude of a wave is A, and its intensity is I. Which amplitude is necessary for the intensity to be doubled to 2I? So we know from our theory that intensity is directly proportional to amplitude squared. So for the first case, when the intensity is I, this is going to be a constant times S squared. For the second case, the intensity is doubled, so this is going to be twice I equaling to the same constant, and the amplitude I will call it A2 squared. So we need to find A2 from these two equations here. So what shall I do? I will divide the two equations. So I will say twice K A2 squared divided by K A squared. Should be equal to twice i. Sorry, this is not twice. So I'm dividing the two equations, but I'm starting from the right hand side. So this is 2i over i. So i has cancelled. I has cancelled, k has cancelled. So here I remained with a2, remember? So a2 squared is going to be equal to 2 times a squared. So I find a square root. It means that a2 is equal to the root of 2 times a because I'm finding the square root of both sides. So root of 2 times a, that makes the answer to be c. It is root of 2 times a. So that makes the answer to be C. Okay. Which value is a possible wavelength of radiation in the ultraviolet region of the electromagnetic spectrum? Ultraviolet, that is after violet. And of course, after violet, most likely, uh, if you are an expert in this, you don't even need to state thinking that the answer is approximately 3 times 10 power negative 8. If you need to be reminded, Rumenera's mother is visiting Uncle Xavier's garden. In the visible range, on the right-hand side, we have violet, which is 4 times 10 power negative 7. So all powers which are greater than negative 7 uh, must, must, will not be ultraviolet because the power should be less than that power should be less than negative 7. So this is greater, this is greater. So we have two options. But then just ultraviolet is just after violet, which violet is 10 power negative 7, and it means the next one is going to be 10 power negative 8. Therefore, the answer is going to be C. The diagram shows uh, two tubes. One is closed at one end, another one is open at both ends. The tubes are identical except tube X is closed at its lower end, while tube Y is open at its lower end. Both tubes have open upper ends. A tuning fork placed above tube X causes resonance of air at a frequency of F. Okay? So, of course, for the fundamental, no resonance is found at any lower frequency than F. That, that's, that means this is the fundamental here. So the fundamental here, F, is remember V over L, but here the length L here, so V over lambda, the length L here is representing a quarter cycle. So L is equal to 1 over 4 of the wavelength. The length of the tube here is, because this is the fundamental, the length of the tube is giving us a quarter a cycle. If I was to sketch it here, there is an antinode at the open end and there is a node at the closed end in the fundamental mode of vibration. So the length L is representing a quarter of a cycle. If it was a full cycle, it would be something like this. But then in a closed tube, we are only taking this part here, which is a quarter cycle. So it means the wavelength lambda is equal to 4L. So F is going to be V over 4L. So F is V over 4L. And it is the fundamental mode. Okay. Which tuning fork will produce resonance when placed just above tube Y? Just above tube Y. Let's first find... Um, the fundamental mode of vibration of tube Y. So we have, we are going to have uh, 
two ant nodes at the open end for a, an open pipe and the length L represents a quarter plus a quarter which is a half of wavelength so wavelength is going to be twice L which means the fundamental mode of vibration of the open pipe is going to be V divided by 2L what is the relationship between F naught and, and F if I multiply um, if I multiply F by 2, I get F naught. You notice that F naught is equal to twice F. If I multiply, um, sorry, this is for L. If I multiply F by 2, if I put here times 2, I will get this one here, which means F naught is twice F. Okay, so the question is, which tuning fork will produce resonance when placed just above tube? Why? We are seeing that the fundamental frequency of, of an open pipe is always twice that of a closed pipe. So uh, precisely you notice that our answer is going to be D, a fork of frequency twice F. The fundamental frequency of an open pipe is twice that of a closed pipe. So that is twice F. A, microphone a microwave transmitter emits waves towards a metal plate. The waves strike the plate and are reflected back along their original path. Okay. So we are seeing the demonstration here. A microwave detector is moved along the line PT. Points P, Q, R, and S, and T are the positions where minima of intensity are observed. These points are found to be 15 millimeters apart. What is the frequency of the microwaves? So we know that the distance between two successive minimum points or two successive maximum points is half wavelength. So distance between a minima, let me just call them minima, I will call them mm, is half wavelength. And we want the frequency, so the wavelength here because the distance between two minimum points is 15, so 15 millimeters is equal to half wavelength, meaning that the wavelength is 30 millimeters. Then frequency is equal to um, V over lambda, and V it is a microwave, so we don't need to be given V. V is 3 times 10 power 8. The wavelength is 30 times 10 power negative 3. So we just check with our calculator, 3 exponent 8, divide by 30 exponent negative 3. So this is giving us 1 times 10 power 10, 1 times 10 power 10 hertz. So we can check the answer, of course one, uh, we have answers here in gigahertz, so 1 times 10, we just divide by 10 power 9, so this is 1 times 10 power 10 divided by 10 power 9 to get the answer in gigahertz. And of course, this gives you 10 gigahertz. So our answer is going to be C. A double slit experiment using light of wavelength 600 nanometers results in fringes being produced on a screen. The fringe separation is found to be 1.0 millimeters. When the distance between uh, the double slits and the viewing screen is increased by two, it is increased by two meters, the fringe separation increases to three millimeters. What is the separation of the double slits producing the fringes? Okay, so since it is a double slit, we know for a double slit, lambda is equal to AX divided by D. A lambda is wavelength, A is slit separation, and X is the fringe separation, D is the distance between the slits and the screen. So let's substitute, I will not convert uh, N of the units, it is not necessary. A double slit using light of wavelength, so wavelength is 600 nanometers, 600 is equal to, uh, the slit separation is A, results in the fringes being produced on a screen. The fringe separation is found to be, so X is, X is 1 millimeter. I'm not, I said I'm not converting because here there's just a division and multiplication. 
then divide by the slit, the distance between the screen and and the slits which is going to be d that is the first equation for the second equation the wavelength is remaining the same 600 the slit separation is still a when the distance between the double slits and the viewing screen is increased by 2 meters so we have a and the fringe separation is 3 so this is times 3 over d has been increased by so we add so this is going to be d plus 2 meters okay so we just simplify this we combine the two equations and then we find uh, a so without hesitation without wasting time uh, from the first equation i want to make a d the subject in the first equation this is the second equation from the first equation d is going to be equal to um okay i have no option i will convert these units because if i don't convert okay but let me just equate the two equations so i'll say a over d is equal to d to 3a over d plus 2. so we can cross multiply when we cross multiply here a cancels out so i remain with the d plus 2 is equal to 3d which means d alone uh, d plus 2 is equal to 3d which means uh, d is going to be 1 meter when i solve that simple equation d is 1 meter and if d is 1 meter because this is when i take it the other side it will be 2d the other side is 2d so if d is 1 meter i'll go and substitute for d in one of those equations and i find and now here i have to convert okay so i have d i have 600 times 10 power negative um, 600 times 10 power negative 9 is equal to a times uh, x is 1 millimeter so a times 1 times 10 power negative 3 divide by d which is 1 meter so we just divide 600 exponent negative 9 then uh, divide by 1 exponent negative 3 so this gives us a 6 times 10 power negative 4 6 times 10 power negative 4 the answers are given in millimeters so I multiply by a thousand to change it to meters so a is 6 times 10 power negative 4 in meters. I multiply by 1,000 to change the answer to millimeters. So times 1,000, which gives us 0 0.6 millimeters. So our answer here is going to be B. I've, did, I've done the long way, but I know most of you or some of you are good mathematicians. You can do this in a few steps. Which of the following is true for all transverse waves? all transverse waves of course all transverse waves can be polarized when we say they are all electromagnetic that is not true because the waves on a rope are not electromagnetic waves waves on a string uh, water waves are transverse but they are not electromagnetic so all we can know is that they are they can all be polarized the graph represents a stationary wave at two different times what does the distance x y represent so this is displacement against distance and we see this is distance it is a stationary wave so this is distance this is a, an antinode and this is an antinode so distance between two successive antinodes is always a half wavelength so the answer here is going to be d Electromagnetic waves of wavelength lambda and frequency f travel the speed c in a, in a vacuum. Which of the following describes the wavelength and speed of electromagnetic waves of frequency f over 2? So we notice that v is uh, or c speed is equal to lambda times f. Uh, speed is equal to lambda times f. Which of the following describes the wavelength and speed of electromagnetic waves? So speed remains the same. So it can't be twice, speed is constant, is, uh, is C. But then, the new speed is C, the wavelength is going to be 
um, unknown. Let me say the wavelength is unknown, but the frequency is f over 2. So if, I, uh, if the wavelength is unknown and the frequency is f over 2, then what is the wavelength? So I will substitute here. Where there is c, I will put lambda f is equal to x, which is unknown wavelength, then times f over 2. So f has cancelled out. And if f has cancelled out, it means that if I make x the subject, x is going to be twice lambda. So it means the wavelength is twice. So the answer is going to be c. A sound wave is displayed on the screen of a CRO. The time base of the CRO is 2.5 milliseconds per centimeter. What is the frequency? So the length representing one cycle is this length, which is 1, 2, 3, 4 centimeters. So one, uh, 4 centimeters representing one cycle. Okay, so 4 centimeters are representing one cycle. So it means the period is equal to the length, which is 4 centimeters representing one cycle, times the time base set, which is 2.5 uh, milliseconds. That is times 10 power negative 3 in seconds. So I think that is 9. Is it 9? No. 4 times 2.5. It is 10, actually. So that is 10 times 10 power negative 3 in seconds. So the frequency is going to be 1 over period which is 1 over 10 times 10 power negative 3. So we now sub put in the calculator 1 divided by 10 exponent negative 3, which gives us 100 hertz. So our answer is 100, which is B. When the light from two lamps falls on a screen, no interference pattern can be obtained. Why is this? Of course, two lamps can never produce coherent light or can never be coherent sources of light. The lamps are not point sources. That's not the case. The lamps emit light of different amplitudes. That may not be the case. The light from the lamps is not coherent. The light from two separate lamps can never be coherent because it changes phase abruptly. In a very short period of time, which human, uh, which our eyes cannot follow. Which of the following summarizes the change in wave characteristics on going from infrared to ultraviolet? So uh, the speed does not change. This one is wrong. This one is wrong. Romanera's mother is visiting Uncle Xavier's garden. From uh, this side. What is increasing is a frequency. And this side, what is increasing is wavelength. So here it is increasing wavelength. Here it is increasing frequency. So frequency increases as you move towards gamma rays. And this is infrared. And ultraviolet is there. So frequency is increasing as you move from infrared to ultraviolet. It is the frequency increasing. And therefore, the answer is going to be C. The frequency increases as I move from infrared to ultraviolet. The wavelength decreases. The diagram shows a cathode ray oscilloscope trace of a sound wave. The time base is calibrated at 2, cent, two milliseconds per centimeter. What is the frequency of the sound wave? Okay. So uh, assuming that this is one centimeter, I don't see the calibrations here on this time base. Let me assume it is one centimeter. So this is one, two, three, four for one complete cycle. It is four. So uh, the period is going to be the length of one cycle, which is four centimeters, times the time base setting, which is 2.0 milliseconds per centimeter which gives us 8 times 10 power negative 3 in seconds because per centimeter cancels out. Then the frequency is going to be 1 over period, which is going to be 1 divided by 8 times 10 power negative 3. So we just check our calculator 1 divided by 8 exponent negative 3. So that is 125. So our frequency is 125 hertz. Which statement correctly relates the intensity of 
which uh, statement correctly uh, relates the intensity of a sound wave to the vibrations of the molecules. We know that intensity is directly proportional to amplitude squared. So just look for that. This is wrong. And our answer is going to be B. Intensity is directly proportional to amplitude squared. Two progressive waves of frequency 300 hertz are superimposed to produce a stationary wave in which adjacent nodes are 1.5 meters apart. I want you to remember distance between two adjacent nodes or two adjacent antinodes is always half wavelength. This therefore implies that our wavelength is going to be twice the distance, which is 1.5. So this is going to be 3 meters. What is the speed of the progressive wave? So the speed is equal to lambda times f, which is going to be 3 times 300, which gives us 900 meters per second. So our answer here is going to be d. The following trace is seen on the screen of a CRO. The setting of the time base is then changed from 10 milliseconds per centimeter to uh, 20 milliseconds per centimeter. And the Y sensitivity is unaltered. That means the amplitude should remain the same. If the Y sensitivity is unaltered, the amplitude should not remain the same. And here you notice that the amplitude was represented by two boxes. So let's check here. So this is not going to be correct because the amplitude has been doubled. Uh, this is also not going to be correct because the amplitude has been doubled. So remain with the two options, C and D and B. So they have said we have seen that the time base has been changed. The time base setting has been changed to 20 milliseconds per centimeter. Note that period uh, is equal to the length of the cycle times the time base setting. The length times the time base setting. And we know that frequency is equal to 1 over the period, so this would be 1 over L times X. So if X has been increased, if X has been increased, then it means if X has been increased um, from 10 milliseconds to 20 milliseconds per centimeter, X has been increased, it means... Um, Okay, the, the setting of the time base is then changed from 10 milliseconds to 20 milliseconds per centimeter. So X has been increased from 10 milliseconds to 20 milliseconds. Why can't I put in values here? Of course, when X increases, most likely it means uh, because X is inversely proportional to L, it means most likely L must decrease. If X has been increased because X is inversely proportional to L, most likely we would expect that L must actually decrease. That, that means the, uh, wave, the frequency is actually going to be increased because in general, L times X will be a smaller value. L times X is going to be a smaller value. And therefore, if L times X is going to be a smaller value, it means the frequency is going to be higher than the one which we have here. If L had been represented by 10, uh, by, is it 1, 2, 3, 4 boxes? If L had been represented by 4 boxes, and that means, let me call this centimeters. So the period here was initially uh, 4 centimeters times the time base setting, which was 10 milliseconds per centimeter. The time base setting was uh, 10 milliseconds per centimeter. Here it means the period was actually 4 times 10 power negative, power negative, uh, this is negative what? Power negative 3, this is 40 times 10 power negative 3 seconds. So if X has been increased from then, uh, from... 20 milliseconds per centimeter to uh, from 10 to 20. Let's check the new period is going to be uh, if the length is if the length for uh, if, if x has been uh, changed. So this is going to be l times uh, 20 
L times 20 times 10 power negative 3, that is uh, in seconds. It means if the period remains this, if the period is remain the same, then L is going to be smaller. So that means 4 times 10, 40 times 10 power negative 3 would be equal to L times 20 times 10 power negative 3, which would mean um, this cancels out which would mean L would be represented by 2 centimeters. That means L becomes smaller. So if I come here, it means our answer is going to be C and not B. Okay. Which observation indicates that sound waves are longitudinal? Sound can be reflected to the surface. Um, sound cannot be polarized. That is the most appropriate answer because if it is longitudinal, the vibration of particles are part of the direction of propagation of energy. So there is nothing like confining the vibrations in one plane. They are already in one plane as the propagation of energy. A plane wave of amplitude A is incident on the surface of, surface of area S, placed so that it is perpendicular to the direction of travel of the wave. The energy per unit time reaching the surface is E. The amplitude of the wave is increased to twice E, and the area of the surface is reduced to a, a half S. How much energy per unit time reaches this, this smaller surface? Remember, energy per unit time is actually power, and power is equal to is related to intensity by uh, intensity is equal to power over area. But remember, intensity is directly proportional to amplitude squared. So um, it means power is equal to intensity times area. The area has been given as S. So they have just told us that energy per unit time is E, so where there is, which is power actually. So energy per unit time, I'll use E for energy per unit time, but remember, uh, energy per unit time is power. So E is going to be intensity. Uh, the intensity is not known. I will call it I, and the surface area is given as S for the first case. For the second case, um, so let me call this one I1. For the second case, the energy is not known. I will call it E2. The intensity is not known. I will call it I2. But the surface area has been reduced to a half of S. So this is times a half of half of s. So the question is how much energy per unit time reaches the smaller surface? Remember intensity is directly proportional to amplitude squared. So I want us to bring in the concept of amplitude. So intensity is going to be k times amplitude squared. So where there is ampli intensity I'm going to put the constant times the amplitude squared. So for the first equation this is going to be equal to where there is I1, I'll put there the uh, K, the amplitude for I1 is A, so this would be A squared, then times S. For the second one, I'll put there also K, but the amplitude was twice A, so this would be into 2A, and this is squared, then times, this is a half S, times a half of S. So let's combine these two equations by just dividing. So I'll have E2 divided by E, is equal to k uh, times 4a squared, I'm opening the bracket there, times a half s divided by k times a squared times s. So I'll cross out some of these things. k cancels, a squared cancels, s cancels, and I, I have 4 times, 4 times a half, which is 2. So I have that E2 is equal to twice E, making our answer to be B. So what is, uh, what is the approximate range of frequencies of infrared radiation? Approximate range of frequencies of infrared radiation. So it is hard to see the frequency uh, directly, but it's easier to see the wavelength. Romanera's mother, is visiting Uncle Xavier's garden. Infrared is here and we can predict its wavelength is around 10 power negative 5 in meters. 
because it is after red and red is 10 power red is 10 power negative 7 in meters so since we can predict the wavelength of infrared as 10 power negative 5 in meters let's predict the frequency now which is close so that we just take a range which is close to that frequency so frequency is going to be equal to speed, which is 3 times 10 power 8, or just say 10 power 8, divide by 10 power negative 5. So I will ignore the 3 here. So we have, of course, here we just add the powers. So that would be 10 power 8 and 15, that is power 13. So it means uh, that range must be here. Power 13 is there, so the answer is going to be C. The lines of a diffraction grating have a spacing of 1.6 times 10 power negative 6 meters. A beam of light is incident normally on the grating. The first order maximum, so n is equal to 1, makes an angle of 20 degrees with an undeviated beam. What is the wavelength of the incident light? If it is a diffraction grating, we know that n times lambda is equal to d sine of theta. n is 1, the wavelength is lambda. D is 1.6 times 10 power negative 6 sine of 20. So this means lambda is going to be 1.6 exponent negative 6 times sine of 20, which makes our answer to be 5.47. Times 10 power negative 7 in meters. To bring in nano, we divide 4.5.47 divided by 10 power negative 9. Of course, this is 10 power negative 7. So divide by 1 exponent negative 9. That gives us 547 or approximately 550. 550 nanometers. So our answer is going to be D. What do not travel at the speed of light in a vacuum? Electrons, of course. This is electrons. Microwaves, they travel at the speed. Radio waves, these ones are electromagnetic. So the answer is going to be electrons. These ones do not travel at the speed of light. The number of wavelengths of visible light in one meter is of the order of number of wavelengths of visible light in one meter. So we know that the, for visible light wavelength is approximately 10 power negative 7 meters. So how many wavelengths are in 1 meter? So we just say uh, 1 divided by 10 power negative 7. So a value which is close to the answer here will be actually the, uh, the number of, of wavelengths. So 1 divided by... So that is 10 power 7. Um, okay, let's just choose a color, maybe. Let's, th let's say we have taken a 4 times 10 power, or let's say 7, because 7 is the biggest. 7 times 10 power negative 7, that is for red in the visible light. So I'll say 7 times that. So let's say 1 divided by 7 exponent negative 7. So this is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So that is power 6. This is going to be a 1.4 times 10 power 6. So that means the answer should be power 6. So the answer is going to be B. A healthy inspector is measuring the intensity of a sound. Near a loudspeaker, his emitters record an intensity I. This corresponds to an amplitude A of the sound wave. At another position, the meter gives an intensity of reading of twice I. What is the approximate corresponding sound wave amplitude? So we know intensity is directly proportion to amplitude squared. So when the intensity is I, this should be called a constant times amplitude A squared. When the intensity is twice I, when the intensity is twice i, this should be equal to a constant. Where there is amplitude, we shall put the a2 squared because it is not known. So we are going to combine these two equations. 
I'll just divide 2i divide by i is equal to k a2 squared divide by k a squared. So some of these things will cancel out. I cancels, k cancels. I make a2 the subject. So you notice that a2 a2 squared is equal to twice a squared. Then we find the square root. We find the square root to both sides. So it means a2 is equal to the root of 2 times a, because a squared, when you find a square root, remain with the 2. Therefore, our answer is going to be root 2 times a. A sound wave is set up in a long, tu a long tube, closed at one end. The length of the tube is adjusted until the sound from the tube is loudest, that is resonance. So it is closed at one end, then for, uh, we know for a closed tube, the loudest sound is formed when the uh, length of the tube is equal to a quarter of wavelength. What is the nature of the sound wave in the tube? Of course, this sound must be longitudinal, so where there is transverse, we ignore. But when we hear the loudest sound, it means resonance has occurred. We have a stationary wave, so the answer is going to be B. T is a, micro, a microwave transmitter placed at a fixed distance from a flat reflecting surface. Yes. A small microwave receiver is moved steadily from T, to, from T towards S and receives signals of alternate maxima and minima of intensity. The distance between successive uh, maxima is 15 m, I mean 15 millimeters. Distance between two successive maxima is half wavelength. So distance between two successive maxima points is half wavelength. So wavelength is going to be 2 times 15, which is 30 millimeters. What is the frequency of the microwave? So frequency is equal to V or speed over wavelength. Microwave speed is 3 times 10 power 8 divided by 30 times 10 power negative 3. 3 exponent 8 divided by 30 exponent negative 3. That's 1 times 10 power 10, which is going to be C. 1 times 10 power 10 hertz, which is C automatically. A teacher sets up the apparatus shown to demonstrate two, a two-slit interference pattern on the screen, which changes to the apparatus will increase the fringe spacing. Remember, fringe spacing is labeled, is normally called X. So for a double-slit lambda, wavelength is equal to A, but this time A has been represented by Q, so I put a Q times the fringe spacing x divided by d, where d this time has been represented by r. Distance between the slits and the screen is normally represented by capital D. This time it is r. So which r change to the apparatus will increase the fringe spacing. From here you see that lambda times r is equal to q times x. We want x to increase. There are two things that we can do. Or three, number one, you can increase the wavelength because they are directly proportional, or increase uh, R because they are directly proportional, or decrease Q because they are inversely proportional. So decreasing the distance P, P does not affect, is not appearing in that formula, so that one is wrong. Decreasing the distance Q, when, de when Q decreases, X increases because they are inversely proportional, so our answer is going to be B. A parallel beam of white light is incident normally on a diffraction grating. It is noted that the second order and third order separate uh, spectra partially overlap. Which wavelength in the third order spectrum appears at the same angle as the wavelength of, this, of uh, 600 nanometers in the second order spectrum? It is noted that the second order and the third order spectra partially overlap. So for a diffraction grating, we know that n times lambda is equal to d sine theta. Uh, for a wavelength of 600 nanometers in the second order, that means n is 2, so times 2 is equal to d sine of theta. 
because they are passing through the same diffraction grating. For the wavelength, which is not known, but for corresponding to a third order, so lamb, three times lambda is going to also be equal to d sine theta because the angle is uh, they they are over appear they are appearing at the same angle. D is the slit separation. They are going through the same slits. So we just equate these two equations and we say 3 times lambda is equal to 2 times 600. So um, 2 times 600 divided by 3, which gives us 400. So our answer is going to be lambda is equal to 400 nanometers. So that is B. The cathode ray oscilloscope display shows the waveform produced by an electronic circuit. The CRO time base is set to 10 milliseconds per division. What is the period? So the period will be equal to the length representing one cycle times the time base set. So for one cycle, it stops here, 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, meters, so that is 4 divisions, times the time base setting, which is 10 times 10 power negative, or they want the answer in milliseconds. 10 milliseconds per division. So per division cancels. And this leaves us with uh, 4 times. It is 4 times 10, which is 40 milliseconds. So our answer is going to be C. That is a very easy question. Which phenomenon is associated with the transverse waves but not locked noise? Polarization is the most important phenomenon here, which distinguishes transverse waves from longitudinal. Because longitudinal waves have their particles vibrating in one in the same plane as the direction of propagation of energy, then uh, they cannot undergo polarization. A displacement time graph, a displacement time graph. A displacement time graph is shown for a particular wave. A second wave of similar type has twice uh, the intensity and half the frequency. Twice the intensity. Remember, intensity is directly proportional to amplitude squared. Twice the intensity. Okay, let's first find the amplitude. For this one, the intensity I is equal to amplitude, which is represented by one box. I'll just say one. I'll just call one box one. So this is going to be a K times one squared. A second wave of similar type of has twice the intensity. So twice I is equal to a constant. And the amplitude, we don't know. Let's call it A squared. We combine the two equations. Um, where there is I, I can put K times one. So this becomes twice into k times 1 squared equals to k times s squared. It means uh, the second amplitude, the amplitude is going to be the square root of 2 because k cancels, 1 squared has no effect. So the amplitude is going to be the square root of 2. And the square root of 2 is, I think, less than 1. Uh, root, I mean, uh, is less than 2 root of 2. Is 1.4 around 1.4. That is one. Uh, the box it should be one box and a half and above. So this is showing twice the amplitude. It is not yet twice. This is showing twice the amplitude is not yet twice. So we have to choose between B and D. Between B and D. Let's check the frequency. And half the frequency. So the frequency must be half of this. In other words, in one box, we must have two cycles. This one is showing a higher frequency. So this, I mean a smaller frequency. Sorry. Has twice the intensity and half the frequency. Okay. If the frequency is half, it means in one, uh, it takes, the period is going to be longer because period is inversely proportional to frequency. So if frequency is a half, the period is going to be double. So this one is showing the frequency is higher and the period is smaller, so the answer is going to be B. If the frequency is half, the period is double. So the period is, uh, the frequency, here yeah, the period was represented by uh, two boxes. If the frequency is half, the period is doubled. So it means the period is going to be represented by twice the number of boxes as before.
The frequency of a certain wave is 500 hertz and its speed is 340 meters per second. What is the phase difference between the motions of two points on the wave 0.17 meters apart? So uh, these are going to help us to find the wavelength. So the wavelength is going to be equal to uh, free speed, which is 340, divided by frequency, which is 500. That is the wavelength. And we know that phase is equal to the answers are in radians, so it will be 2 pi in radians into distance out of step or distance apart divided by wavelength. So this is 2 pi in radians, and this is x is going to be 0 0.17 divided by wavelength, which is 340 over 500. So I will say 340 divide by 500 then I'll say 0 0.17 divide by the answer then I'll multiply this is a quarter times 2 pi so this is 2 pi times 1 over 4 which is going to be pi over 2 pi over 2 radians so this is in radians so the answer is going to be b where in a standing wave do the vibrations of the medium occur in a standing wave. Only at the nodes, that is not true. Only at the antinodes, that is also not true. Our vibrations occur between the nodes, between two adjacent nodes, so it is not only at antinodes. All particles have particles have amplitudes which range from zero at the nodes and goes on increasing to maximum at the antinodes. At all points between the nodes, so the answer is going to be C. At all points between antinodes, this is not true because there is a node between two antinodes. Monochromatic light is incident on a diffraction grating and a diffraction pattern is observed. Which line of the table gives the effect of replacing the grating with one that has more lines per meter? More lines per meter. So we know for a diffraction grating n lambda is equal to d sine theta and d is 1 over n so n times lambda is equal to 1 over capital n which is the number of lines per meter then times sine of theta okay so we are looking at the number of orders that is small n and the angle between the first and the second order the orders of diffraction that will be theta 2 minus theta 1. That is the angle between those two. Okay, so um, so you notice that um, we are increasing n. So we're increasing n. n is inversely proportional to small n. So if we increase n, number of lines per meter, it means we decrease n. That is the number of orders. Therefore, increase of the number of orders will not work. But then, the angle between the first and the second orders of diffraction. Now, the angle, when I take n the other side, you have capital N, small n lambda, is equal to sine, sine theta. So, if we increase n, it means uh, sine theta increases. Therefore, the angle is also going to be increased. Therefore, the answer is going to be B. The angle between the first and second orders of diffraction increases. An oscilloscope display consists of two separate traces, a waveform and a long horizontal line. The horizontal line may be taken as the zero level. The grid on the screen is calibrated in centimeter squares. The time base is the time base setting is at 2.5 milliseconds per centimeter and the y sensitivity is 5 millivolts per centimeter. What are the period and peak positive voltage of the waveform? Peak positive. They said this horizontal line can be taken as the zero level. So let's look for the peak. Let's begin with the uh, voltage 
the peak vo positive voltage. So this is one, two, three. This is more than a half. So we can ex estimate it to seven. 3.7 is just an estimate. So I'll say that is about 3.7 in centimeters. 3.7 in centimeters times the Y sensitivity, which is five. So 3.7 centimeters times five. So this gives us um, a 18.5 18 and the value which is closer there is most likely, let's check in the table, it's most likely 17, so we, uh, we cancel out 25. So it is most likely 17, the value which is close to 18.5 is most likely 17. Because I, I estimated this, I would have estimated this as 3.6. Let me check 3.6 uh, times times 5 that is 18 okay so I, but i can't estimate it as 3.5 honest 3.5 times 5 that is 17.5 it is actually above a small circle but anyway since there's an estimate we can first eliminate 25 because it's far bigger let's check the period so if we start from um Let's start from this point. Let's start from this point here. So one cycle starts from this point here. It repeats itself at around this point here. The second cycle starts from here. So this is one, two, three, four, approximately four times the time base setting, which is 2.5. And that gives us 10. So this is 10 milliseconds. 4 centimeters representing one cycle, time base setting is 2.5. So period is length of one cycle times the time base setting, which is giving us a 10 milliseconds. 10 milliseconds. So the answer here is going to be C. Which of the following types of wave can be polarized? Can be polarized. They must be electron uh, transverse. Longitudinal, longitudinal, no. Transverse stationary wave, a transverse stationary wave, a transverse sound wave. There is no sound wave which is transverse, so the answer is going to be C. A sound wave X has intensity 10 power 12 times greater than the sound of sound wave Y. By how much is the amplitude of X greater than that of, of Y? We know that intensity is equal to a constant times the amplitude squared. Intensity is amplitude, is directly proportional to amplitude squared. So uh, a sound wave X has intensity 10 times greater than that of sound Y. So if intensity of Y is I, so I is going to be equal to K times its amplitude S squared. This is for Y. Let me say I, Y is equal to that. So I intensity of Y is equal to I, which is K S squared. Then intensity of X is equal to, because X is 10 times, so this is going to be 10 power 12 I. 10 power 12 times I is equal to K. Uh, let its amplitude be A X squared. So just combine the two equations because we want to find A X. So I will divide the two equations. K A X squared divided by K s squared which is going to be equal to 10 power 12 of i divided by i and i cancels out k also cancels out so it means um s a x is going to be the square root of uh, s squared which is a times the root of 10 power 12 so how many times is that so root of 10 root of uh, one exponent uh, 12 root of one exponent 12 so that is one two three four five six one times ten power six so it is ten, ten power six times so a ten power six times a 
the answer here is going to be 10 power 6 times, so the answer is A. The graph shows the shape or at a particular instant of a part of, part of a transverse wave traveling along a string. Which statement about the motion of the points of points in the string is called? The speed at point P is the maximum. At maximum displacement, the speed is zero. So that is not true. The displacement at point Q is always zero. The displacement at point Q is always zero. It is a transverse wave. The, the graph shows the shape at a particular instant of part of a transverse wave traveling along the string. Which statement about the motion of points in the string is correct? The displacement at point Q is already zero, not really. The energy at R is entirely kinetic, but at maximum displacement, the, uh, the, the velocity is almost zero, so that may not be true. The acceleration at point S is a maximum. At maximum displacement, the velocity is zero, and when the velocity is zero, At point S, that is at maximum displacement, the velocity is always is approximately zero. And when the velocity is zero, the acceleration is maximum. So the answer is going to be D. So these ones we shall ignore them. When displacement is maximum, velocity is zero. When velocity is zero, the acceleration is maximum. So the answer is going to be D. The diagram illustrates part of the electromagnetic spectrum. High frequencies this side, low frequencies that side. Which the labels are correct for the regions marked 1 and 2? So Rumenera's mother is visiting Uncle Xavier's garden. High frequencies this side. Okay, so one is infrared and two is um, X-rays. Infrared has a lower frequency than um, X-rays. Yet this this side we have this can't be X because it is X has a higher frequency. So A is wrong. B is microwaves, microwaves, and two is X-rays. Uh, microwaves cannot have a higher frequency than X-rays. So this is also wrong. C is ultraviolet, ultraviolet, and microwaves. C is ultraviolet and microwaves. Ultraviolet and microwaves. So ultraviolet have a, a higher frequency. Ultraviolet have a higher frequency than uh, microwaves. That would be true. Ultraviolet has a higher frequency than microwaves. So this is ultraviolet. And the other one is, sorry, this is, one is saying one is ultraviolet, which has a higher frequency than microwaves. That would be true. But ultraviolet is just after violet. So it is supposed to be next to the visible spectrum. So that means this is also not correct. D, one is X-rays and two is infrared. X-rays have higher frequency than infrared and infrared is just next to red, which is fine. X-rays, we are skipping one region here, which is most likely going to be ultraviolet. before we reach our uh, x-rays so it means the answer is going to be is going to be d the answer is going to be d okay the diagram represents a stationary wave on a stretched string what is represented by point p and by the length x 
Point P is most likely going to be a node, not an ant node. The length x, distance between a node and the next node, uh, two, uh, distance between uh, this node and this node, I think that is wavelength. That's one wavelength. So this is going to be a node and one wavelength. So this is C. A two slit arrangement is set up to produce interference fringes on a screen. The fringes are too close together for convenient observation when a monochromatic source of violet light is used. In which way would it be possible to increase the separation of the fringes? It is a double slit, okay? A double slit lambda is equal to AX over D, where lambda is wavelength, A is slit separation, X is a fringe separation. In which way would it possible to increase the separation of the fringes? We want to increase X, so we can increase lambda, we increase D, or we decrease A. Decrease the distance between the screen and the slits. That one will decrease x. Increase the distance between the two slits. That is increasing a would also decrease. Increasing a would decrease x because they are inversely proportional. Increase the width of each slit. Increasing the width just affects increases the intensity. Use um, monochromatic source of red light. So here we had used um, violet. So red has a longer wavelength. So red has a longer wavelength, increasing uh, wavelength. So red, a wavelength of red is greater than wavelength of violet. So if we increase the wavelength, X increases. So the answer is going to be D. A stationary longitudinal wave is set up in a pipe. In the diagrams below, the length of each arrow represents uh, the amplitude of the motion of the air molecules and the arrowhead shows the direction of motion of a particular at a particular instant which diagram shows a stationary wave in which in which there are two nodes and two antinodes here there is only there are two nodes there is no antinode here um, this is an antinode this is a node, and this is showing that there is an antinode here, which is not going to be true. So that is wrong. We want two nodes and two antinodes. This one is showing there is an antinode this side. There is a node here, and node, antinode, and node, and Antinode. So we want two nodes, two nodes and two antinodes. No, this one is not going to be correct. It is showing particles are vibrating when they form. After the node, they are still vibrating the same phase. So, yet uh, they vibrate 180 degrees out of phase after the node. So, this is arrangement is this is not correct. This one is showing there is a node here, and particles are vibrating in one plane. After the next node, they vibrate in the opposite plane. So, this is a node, a node, an antinode. So, there's an antinode here. So, the answer is going to be A. The direction of these arrows is showing the, uh, the direction of vibration of the particles. Remember, particle uh, between two adjacent waves, between two adjacent nodes, I mean, between two adjacent, uh, if this is a node and this is a node, the particles here vibrate in phase with each other. But if this is another, there's another node somewhere, in the next, after that node, the particles in this segment vibrate to 180 degrees out of phase with the particles in the neighboring segment. So if particles here are vibrating in one direction, particles here must be vibrating in the opposite direction. That's why I'm saying the answer is going to be A. The graph shows how the light of a water wave surface at point at a point in a harbor varies with the time as waves pass the point 
what are p and q note that p is not uh, is not the maximum height so it is not amplitude so where we see amplitude we ignore that one then q is so p is just displacement q is this point and this point this is against time that must be period so our answer is going to be b p is displacement and q is period the intensity i of a sound at point p is inversely proportional to the square of the distance x of p from the source of the sound that is i is inversely proportional to x squared Air, air molecules at P, a distance R from S, oscillate with amplitude 8 micrometers. Point Q is stated a distance to R from S. What is the amplitude of oscillation of air molecules at Q? Okay, so we have that intensity is inversely proportional to X squared, where X is the distance from the source of the sound. So let's come up with three equations here first. Intensity at point P is going to be equal to 1, a constant, times 1 over x at P is R, so 1 over R squared. So it is K over R squared. Then intensity at Q is going to also be a constant over the distance, which is going to be 2 R but squared. It becomes 4 R squared. And air molecules at P, a distance R from S, oscillate with amplitude 8.0 micrometers. Remember also intensity is directly proportional to amplitude squared. So I'll just say this is equal to a constant K. Maybe I can use a different constant, but anyway, a constant K times the amplitude, which is 8. I'll just maintain the units, so I'll say 8 squared. This one will be equal to a constant k times the amplitude, which we don't know. And I will call this one uh, amplitude a, a q squared. Okay, so the question is, what is the amplitude of oscillation of air molecules at q? So we combine these two equations. I'll just ignore this part here and concentrate on the other part there. So I'll have that I'm dividing k a q squared, k cancels out, divide by k 8 squared is equal to a k over 4 r squared divided by, so I'll change this to multiplication and I get the reciprocal r squared over k. So some of these things have cancelled out, the k's cancel out, they are just for algebra, r squared cancels out. So I am remaining with the amplitude of Q squared is equal to a cross multiply. We have 8 squared, which is 64. 64 divided by, divide by 4, which gives us 16. Then I find the square root. So AQ is going to be the root of 16, which is equal to 4 micrometers. So the answer is going to be D. So I just use this relationship and the relationship that intensity is directly proportional to amplitude squared. In other words, I have a, I have four equations. The first equation is for intensity and that distance. The second type of equation is for intensity with the amplitudes, but I just combine them at once. Sound waves emitted by a small loudspeaker are reflected by a wall. The frequency f of the waves is adjusted until a stationary wave is formed with the antinode nearest the wall at distance x from the wall. Which expression gives f in terms of x and the speed of, of sound c? A sound wave emitted by a small loudspeaker or sound waves emitted by a small loudspeaker are reflected by a wall. The frequency f of the waves is adjusted until a stationary wave is formed with the antinode nearest to the wall at a distance x from the wall. The antinode nearest the wall. The distance x 
from the wall. We expect at the wall to form um, to find a, a node. So if the ant node nearest, so this is what is happening. The ant node nearest, if there is an ant node here, it is at a distance x from the wall. And the distance, so at the wall we expect a node. Distance between an ant node and the next node is going to be a quarter of wavelength. So wavelength is going to be 4 times x, because distance between the ant node and the node we expect at the wall is, is x. So this wavelength is 4x. Which expression gives f in terms of x and the speed of sound c? So speed c is equal to lambda times f. So f is going to be c divided by lambda, which is 4 times x. And this makes our answer to precisely be d. A diffraction grating has n lines per unit length, that is per meter, and is placed at 90 degrees to monochromatic light of wavelength lambda. What is the expression for theta, the angle to the normal to the grating at which the third order diffraction peak is observed? So since it is a diffraction grating, we know that n times lambda, sorry, not n, not capital n, small n. Small n times lambda is equal to d sine theta. But remember, d is 1 over capital N. So n times lambda is equal to 1 over capital N sine of theta. Which means, and remember, small n is 3 because it is third order. So we shall say 3 times lambda, then times capital N is equal to sine of theta which precisely implies that our answer is going to be uh, option B. Light of wavelength 700 nanometers incident on a pair of slits forming fringes 3 millimeters apart on a screen. What is the fringe spacing when light of, light of wavelength 350 nanometers is used and the slit separation is doubled? Okay, it is a pair of slits, that is double slit, so lambda is equal to Ax divided by D. Light of wavelength, 700 nanometers, incident on a pair of slits. So we have 700 uh, is equal to forming fringes 3 millimeters apart. So A times 3 millimeters, I will not change the units there, divided by the distance between the the screen and the slits is D. What is the fringe spacing when light of 300 nanometers, 350, so 350 is equal to A times the fringe spacing, which we don't know, divided by D. So uh, we just combine these two equations. Where there is A over D, I'm just going to put 700 over 3. So we'll simply say 350 is equal to 700 divided by 3 times x. So I make x the subject. So 350 times 3 divided by 700. And that gives us 1.5 uh, millimeters. So x is equal to 1.5 millimeters. Is it 1.5? Let me check it again. What is the fringe spacing, that is x, when light of wavelength 350 nanometers is used and the slit separation is doubled? Oh, so a is doubled, so there is a 2 here. There is a 2 here. So if there is a 2 there, so I will say 2 into that. Because that is doubled, so there is a 2 there. So 350 times 3 divided by 700, so I just divide this by 2 again. So that is 0 0.75. 0 0.75, yeah. There is a 2 here, which I had ignored. The seat separation is doubled, so there is a 2 here. Twice A over D. Okay. Diffraction is the name given to the addition of two coherent waves, that is superposition, 
no or that could be interference bending of waves that is diffraction no that is diffraction the answer could be b bending of waves around an obstacle that is diffraction so the answer is b which wave properties change when light passes from air into glass uh, color and speed that is not true the color does when uh, which wave property changes when light passes from air into glass what i'm very sure of is that the speed changes and because speed v is equal to lambda times f if the speed changes because it uh, speed of light in a glass is smaller than speed of light in a vacuum so speed decreases and if the speed decreases one of these two must or must have decreased so uh, wavelength and frequency they change they cannot both change when they uh, it change when it moves from uh, from air to glass one of them must change so that means the answer is going to be c speed and wavelength we are sure that the speed is around 2 times 10 power 8 meters per second it decreases so one of these must also decrease so the answer is going to be c a diffraction grating with n lines per meter is used to deflect light of, wave, of various wavelengths lambda so we know for diffraction grating n lambda is equal to d sine of theta so n lambda is equal to 1 over capital n sine of theta making sine theta the subject sine theta is going to be equal to capital n times small n times lambda compare with y is equal to mx plus c there is no c here on the y-axis you have sine theta on the x-axis you have lambda so you see that the gradient is equal to n times m i mean n, capital n times small n what is the gradient of the graph so our answer is a a stationary wave of frequency 80 hertz is set up on a stretched string of length 210 centimeters what is the speed of the waves that produce this stationary wave okay so uh, we have half a cycle plus half a cycle plus half a cycle those are three halves which gives us uh, one and a half that is three over two wavelength is equal to 210 centimeters so it means the wavelength is going to be uh, 210 is 7 21 is 7 by 3 so 70 times 2 that is 140 centimeters that is the wavelength so we want to find the speed so v is equal to lambda times f so that is 140 times 10 power negative 3 if, uh, multiplied by the frequency which is 80 so 140 exponent negative 3 times 80 so that gives us 11 I convert very well. One forty exponent negative. Sorry, it is negative two. Negative two times eighty. Okay, so the answer is going to be B. One hundred and twelve meters per second. Which value is a possible wavelength for radiation in the microwave region? Of course, microwave is around negative 2, negative 3. So the answer is going to be A. You can check uh, if you have Romanera's mother is visiting Uncle Xavier's garden. For the visible, we have about 10 power negative 7. So on this side, wavelength is increasing. So I add 2 to the power of 10. So this is around 10 power negative 5. This is around 10 power negative 3 or negative 2. This is um, around 10 power 1, 2, 3, 4. The other side we have 10 power negative uh, 9, 8, 10 power negative 10, 11, and 10 power negative 13, 14 around there. So the answer is going to be A. 
The four graphs represent a progressive wave on a stretched string. Graphs A and B show how the displacement D varies with the distance x along the string at one instant. Graph Graph C and D show how the displacement D varies with time at a particular value of x. The labels on the graphs are intended to show wavelength and period and amplitude. But only one graph is correctly labeled. Which graph is correctly labeled? So this is x is distance. So this is not going to be period. x is distance. But this is twice amplitude. So that is not correct. A is supposed to be the amplitude. This is t. This can't be wavelength because this is t. That would be period. So this is t. So that is period. And that is amplitude. So the answer is d. A wave of amplitude A has an intensity 3 watts per meter squared. What is the intensity of a wave of the same frequency that has amplitude twice A? So no intensity is directly proportional to amplitude squared. When the intensity is 3, this is equal to a constant, the amplitude is A. Then when the intensity is X, or let me just say I2, this is equal to a constant, and the amplitude is given as twice A squared. So we combine the two. So dividing, we have I2, over 3 is equal to k as cancelled, that is 4a squared over a squared, a cancels. So i2 is equal to 3 times 4, which is equal to 12. So our answer is going to be d. Coherent monochromatic light illuminates two narrow parallel slits and the interference pattern that results is observed on a screen some distance beyond the slits. Which change increases the separation between the darker lines of the interference pattern? So this is a, para, a two narrow parallel slits, so that is double slit. So lambda is equal to ax divided by d. So it means lambda times d is equal to a times x. Which change increases the separation between the dark lines? So we are increasing x. To increase x, you have options such as increasing wavelength, increasing d, or decreasing a. Using monochromatic light of higher frequency, that one decreases wavelength, it decreases x. Using monochromatic light of longer wavelength, when we increase the wavelength, x increases, so the answer is going to be b. Monochromatic light of wavelength 590 nanometers is incident normally on a diffraction grating. The distance, I mean the angle between the two second order diffract, diffracted beams is 43. This is uh, the two, that is plural. So if this is the diffraction grating, monochromatic light is incident, this is the, the, um, the zero order. So this is n equals 2 up and n equals 2 down. The angle between is 43 degrees, so it means the theta is a half. That is 43 divided by 2. That is uh, 21.5. So theta is 21.5 degrees. What is the spacing of the lines on the grating? So we know that n lambda is equal to d sine theta. We want d. That is the spacing of the lines. So n is 2. Wavelength is 590 times 10 power negative 9 equals to d sine theta, so I'll just divide by sine of 21.5, so this is equal to d. So 2 times 590, exponent negative 9, divide by sine of 21.5. So that's 3.2 times 10 power negative 6, And 10 power negative 6 is micro, so the answer is going to be D. The time based on a CRO is set at 6 milliseconds per centimeter. A trace consisting of two pulses is recorded as shown in the diagram. What is the time interval between the two pulses? So the uh, length between the two pulses is 4 seconds, so the time interval is going to be 4.5. 
centimeters times the time base setting, which is um, six milliseconds per centimeter. And per centimeter cancels with the centimeters. So you have four times, sorry, 4.5 times six, which gives us 27. So our answer is going to be D. The graph shows the displacement of a, part, uh, of a particle of a particle in a wave. It shows how the displacement of a particle in a wave varies with the time. Which of the following is correct? So we can see the amplitude must be two centimeters. So four is wrong. Uh, then the period is uh, four seconds. Okay, the wave has an amplitude of 2 centimeters, which is true, could be either transverse or longitudinal. That is also true. We can represent transverse or longitudinal waves like that. The wave has an amplitude of 2 centimeters and must, so it, it, it is not a must that it is only transverse waves represented by that. So our answer is going to be A. A stationary sound wave has a series, has a series of nodes. The distance between the first and the sixth node. The distance between the first and the sixth node is 30 centimeters. What is the wavelength of the sound wave? Okay, so I will just show this manually. I think I've showed this earlier on. The distance between the first and the sixth node. If you apply this, this is one node. Two, three, four, five, six. Remember, the distance between two successive nodes is half wavelength. So maybe people can see this. That is that makes it easy. So that is one wavelength, two wavelengths, and a half. So two and a half, that is five over two. 5 over 2 wavelength, is that true? 2 and a half, so that is 5 over 2 wavelengths, is equal to 30 centimeters. So which means uh, the wavelength lambda is going to be 2 times 30 divided by 5, which is 6 times 2, that gives us uh, 12. Is it 12? I think that is 12. 2 times 30 divided by 5, that is 6 times 2, which is 12 centimeters. Which of the following applies to a progressive transverse wave? It transfers energy. That is obvious. If it is progressive, it must be transferring energy. So these alternatives should be wrong. It should be transferring energy. Um, can be polarized. Yes, transverse waves must can be polarized. So our answer is going to be D. Which of the following may be used to produce stationary waves? Blowing air over the top of an empty bottle that can produce a stationary wave. Making a loud sound near a mountain that cannot produce sound wave. Passing monochromatic light through a double slit that cannot produce a stationary wave. Passing water waves through a narrow slit that will not produce a stationary wave. So a stationary wave can be produced by blowing air over the top of an empty bottle. Resonance will occur. In an interference experiment, two slits are illuminated with white light. Okay, what is seen on the screen? The central fringe is black. Remember, this is white. If it is white, of course, the central fringe is supposed to be white. The central fringe is black, the central fringe is black, that's not true. The central fringe is white, that's true, the central fringe is white, okay? The central fringe is white with the black and white fringes on each side. The central fringe is white with the black and white fringes on each side, that's not true. The central fringe is white. That's true with the colored fringes, yes, because the white they, when they travel different distances above and below, 
then we shall have a pattern of the seven colors. So there will be colored fringes on each side. So our answer is going to be D. So for a white light going through a diffraction grating, it forms a central white fringe, white, a central white fringe with the colored fringes above and below the white fringe. Microwaves of wavelength three centimeters are incident normally on uh, a row of parallel metal rods. The separation of the rods is eight centimeters. The first order diffraction maximum is observed at an angle of 22 degrees to the direction of the incident waves. What is the angle between the first and second order diffraction maximum? So since this is um, a diffraction, microwaves of wavelength that are incident normal on a row of parallel metal rods. A row of parallel metal rods, this is going to be acting as a diffraction grating. So n lambda is equal to d sine theta. The separation d is 8 centimeters. So the separation of the rods is 8 centimeters. The first order diffraction maximum is observed at an angle of 22 degrees. So when n is 1 and the wavelength is, let's say it is lambda, it is 3 centimeters. So that is times 3. Then D is 8 centimeters. I'm not converting the units. Sine of theta. Let this be theta 1 for the first order. So that means theta 1 is equal to 3 divided by 8 sine inverse. So this would be uh, sine inverse of 3 divided by 8. That is theta 1. For the second one, uh, n, is, n is 2. So 2 times 3 is equal to 8 sine of theta 2. So theta 2 is going to be equal to sine inverse of 6 divided by 8. So we can find the difference now. So we shall just subtract the two to find the difference in the angle. So the difference we shall have sine inverse of uh, 6 divided by 8. Sine inverse of 6 divided by 8 minus sine inverse of 3 divided by, divided by 8. So that is giving us 26.6 degrees. So the difference is 26.6 degrees. So the answer is going to be B. When a 12 volt 50 hertz supply is connected to the Y terminals of an oscilloscope, the trace in the diagram is obtained. So this is the trace that we can see. So this is our trace. So one cycle is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 centimeters. What is the setting of the time base control? So uh, they have given us the frequency as 50 hertz. So frequency is equal to 1 over period which is equal to 1 over, uh, period is length, representing 1 cycle times the time base setting. So the frequency is, uh, the frequency is 50 hertz, so I will say that 50 is equal to 1 over, the length representing 1 cycle is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 centimeters. That is 8 centimeters. Remember frequency is in per second, this is per second. This is 8 centimeters times x. So I make x the subject. So x is going to be equal to 1 divided by 8 centimeters times 50 per second. So we now just divide. We shall divide this because the answers are in milliseconds per centimeter. So I will, I will leave centimeters there. So it's 1 divided by 80 times 50. 
So that is 2.5, uh, that will be percent seconds per centimeter, 2.5 seconds per centimeter. So sorry, this is 2.5 times 10 power 4. Two point five times ten power negative four. Yes. So the answers are in milliseconds. To bring in milli, I divide by ten power negative three. So I will say divide by one exponent negative three, which is going to be zero point two five. Zero point. Is it zero point two five? Let me repeat this, 1 divided by 80 times 50. 2.5 times 10 power negative 4. Divide by, uh, mid is 10 power negative 3. So divide by um, 1 exponent negative 3, which is 0 0.25. So this is 0 0.25 milliseconds per centimeter. Where did I go wrong? Let me check again. Sorry. Instead of 8, I'm putting 8. So we have um, 50 times 8. 1 divided by the answer, oh, sorry, this is power negative 3. Sorry about that. So it means uh, in mil it is going to be 2.5. Which makes our answer to be B. That's supposed to be a very simple question. Which of the following is a longitudinal wave? A light wave traveling through air that is transverse, a radio wave that is transverse, a ripple on the surface of water that is transverse, a sound wave that is longitudinal. A stationary sound wave is set up along the line joining two loudspeakers. Which measurement is sufficient on its own to enable you to deduce the wavelength of the wave? A stationary sound wave is set up along the line joining two loudspeakers. So the amplitude cannot help to find a wavelength. Distance between the two loudspeakers alone cannot tell you to, cannot help you to find a wavelength. The distance between uh, two adjacent nodes that can help you to tell the, the wavelength because distance between two adjacent antinodes alone is half wavelength. So the answer is going to be C. The frequency alone cannot help you to tell the wavelength unless the speed is known. A wave of amplitude 20 millimeters has intensity IX. Another wave of the same frequency but amplitude 5 millimeters has intensity IY. What's the ratio IX over IY? So IX, intensity remember is the active portion of amplitude squared. IX is equal to K times 20 squared. That is for x. Then iy is equal to the same constant k times the amplitude is 5. So this will be 5 squared. So iy divided by ix is simply going to be a 5 squared divided by 20 squared. I think that is a 5 squared divided by 20 squared. So the question is, what is the ratio? I mean, what is the ratio? Sorry, it is ix over iy. So it's the other way around. ix divided by iy is 20 squared divided by 5 squared, which is the reciprocal of that. I think the answer is 16. 20 squared divided by 5 squared. That's 16. So the answer is going to be c. Fringes of separation wire observed on a screen one meter from a young slit arrangement that is illuminated by yellow light of wavelength 600 nanometers. At which distance from the slits would fringes of the same separation wire 
be observed when using blue light of wavelength 400. So it is a double slit. So lambda is equal to AX divided by D. For the first case, we have 600. I will not convert. Uh, slit separation, uh, fringes of separation wire observed on a screen one meter apart. So it means D is one meter. And A, let A be this, the slit separation be A. Fringes, separation is Y. For the second one, at which distance from the slits would fringes of the same separation Y be observed when using blue light? So blue light is wavelength 400. Slit separation is still A. Fringe separation is Y and the distance is D. We want to find D. So where there is A, Y, I will just put there 600. So I make it the subject. So D is simply going to be equal to 600 divided by 400. So that is 6 divided by 4, which is 1.5. So at, at which distance from the slits would fringes of the same separation Y be observed when using blue light of wavelength 400 nanometers? So I am saying uh, the answer is possibly, the answer here is possibly going to be uh, one point. Same separation Y be observed when using a blue light of wavelength 400 nanometer. I mean 400 nanometers. So the answer here is going to be 0 0.1.5. So that is 1.5, 1.5 meters. Polarization is a phenomenon associated with a certain type of waves. Which condition must be fulfilled if a wave is to be polarized? It must be transverse. It must be a light wave, not, not, not necessarily longitudinal, no. Radio wave, no. It must be transverse. As long as it's transverse, it, must, it can be polarized. A sound wave has displacement y at distance x from its source at time t. Which graph correctly shows amplitude a and the wavelength lambda of the wave? So this is displacement against distance. So that is wavelength, but this is twice amplitude. So that is wrong. This is displacement against distance. So this is wavelength and this is amplitude. So the answer is B. This is displacement against time, but this is twice amplitude. So that is wrong. And this is wavelength, yet it is against time. This would be period. This would also be period. So the answer is going to be B. The intensity of a progressive wave is proportional to the square of the amplitude of the wave. It is also proportional to the square of the frequency. The variation with the time t of the displacement x of particles in a medium when two progressive waves p and q pass separately through the medium are shown on the figure. So we have a displacement x against time of two particles p and q. The intensity of wave P is I naught. What is the intensity of wave Q? So remember, intensity is equal to a constant times amplitude squared. So for P, intensity IP is equal to, of course, they have called it I naught, is equal to a constant K times the amplitude, which is X naught squared. The intensity of Q, we don't know it but it will be equal to a constant k, and the amplitude is twice x naught, but this is squared. So it becomes k, it becomes k times 4x naught squared. k times 4x naught squared. So we combine the two equations, i naught is equal to that, and i q is equal to that. So i q, Divide by I naught, I'm just dividing the two equations, is equal to K, 4X naught squared, divide by K, X naught squared. So this is going to give us uh, K cancels out, uh, X naught squared cancels out, 
and this gives us we remain with the four times i naught, which makes it is it four? What have I missed out? The intensity of wave P is I naught, and we are seeing I naught is K times uh, the amplitude here is X naught. So I naught is equal to K times X naught squared. Then I Q is K. IQ is K into twice X naught but is squared, so it becomes K um, times 4 X naught squared. And then when I divide the two equations, IQ divided by I naught is equal to K times 4 X naught squared over k x naught squared so that means iq is equal to i naught times 4. The intensity of a progressive wave is proportional to the square of the amplitude of the wave. It is also proportional to the square. Oh, I didn't see this part. It is also proportional to the frequency to the square of the frequency. So I have to repeat this. Bring in a frequency So the intensity of IP is equal to um, IP is equal to I naught. We have given it to us as I naught, but this is a constant. It is proportion to amplitude squared. So I is proportion to amplitude squared and also proportion to F squared. So this will be K times the first amplitude is X naught squared times the frequency. Uh, here the period uh, period frequency is equal to one over period which is 1 over, the period here is T naught, so this is 1 over T naught, so this will be times a 1 over T naught, and this is also squared, okay. Then here, the intensity of Q is going to be equal to a constant K, the amplitude is twice X naught, but this is squared, the frequency here is twice, I mean the period here is twice T naught, so this is going to be 1 over twice T naught, but this is going to be squared because frequency is one over period. Okay, so we have these two equations. Now we are now going to combine them. So the intensity of Q, I'll say IQ, divided by the intensity of Q, which I'm calling I naught, should be equal to. I'm simplifying the numerator, so it will be 4x naught, there's a K there, 4x naught squared times a 1 over 4 t naught squared divide by uh, for IP it is K then times x naught squared times 1 over t naught squared so I'll cross out some of these things K x naught squared um, 1 over t naught squared cancels out but this, uh, this 4 cancels out with that one that 1 over t naught squared is dividing with 1 over t naught squared, so it's like everything cancels out. So it means IQ is equal to I naught. So the answer is going to be B. IQ, because everything is canceling out, we're leaving a 1 this side. A sound wave of frequency 150 hertz travels in water at a speed of 1. 1500 meters per second it then travels through the surface of water and into air where its speed is 300 meters per second which line in the table gives the corrective values for the wavelength of the sound in water and in air so if the frequency is not changing our frequency is inversely proportional um, no if the frequency is not changing, then V is directly proportional to wavelength. If the frequency is not changing, V is directly proportional to 
wavelength. Where the speed is greater, the wavelength must also be greater. So which line in the table gives the correct uh, which line in the table gives the correct values for the wavelength of the sound in water and in air? So in water 1500. So this one is showing it is the same when the speed has changed. No. This one is showing that uh, in the, wa the wavelength in water is smaller than the wavelength in air, yet the speed in water is higher. This is wrong. This is showing the wavelength in water is greater than the wavelength in air. Yes, because we are seeing speed is directly proportional to wavelength. High speed, greater wavelength for the same frequency. So the answer is going to be C. The answer is C. In which situation does diffraction occur? A wave bounces back. That is reflection. A wave passes from one medium into another. That most likely would be refraction. Uh, a wave passes through an aperture. That causes diffraction. Light of wavelength 700 nanometers is, is incident on a pair of slits forming fringes 3 millimeters apart on a screen. What is the fringe spacing when light of wavelength uh, 350 nanometers is used? And the slit separation is doubled. So uh, it is, this is a pair of slits, so that is uh, wavelength is equal to AX divided by D. Because it's a pair of slits. So 700 is equal to uh, forming fringes 3 millimeters. So A is not known, I'll just write it A. Then uh, fringes are 3 millimeters apart, so X is 3 millimeters. Divide by the slits, uh, the distance between the slits and the screen is D. Then the wavelength is 350 nanometers. The slit separation is A. What is the fringe spacing when light of wavelength 350 is used and the slit separation is doubled? So slit separation is doubled, so this is twice A. Then times uh, the fringes, fringe separation is not known. And the distance D is remaining the same. So where there is A over D, I'm going to put there 700 over 3. So I have 350 is equal to 2 into 700 over 3, then times x. I'm just combining these two equations and solving them. So it means x is going to be 350 times 3, divided by uh, 2 times 700. So it means x is going to be 0 0.75. So x is equal to 0 0.75 millimeters. So our answer is going to be A. The Y input terminals, the Y input terminals of a CRO are connected to a supply of peak value 5 volts and a of frequency 50 hertz. The time base is set at 10 milliseconds per division and the Y gain 5 volts per division. So Y volts is 5, the Y gain is 5 volts per division. Okay. Now the question here is missing. The question here is missing. The Y input terminals of a cathode ray oscilloscope are connected to a supply of peak value 5 volts. The peak value is 5 volts. So uh, let's assume they wanted the trace which is correct. If the peak value is 5 volts and 1 volt is represented by 5, uh, I mean 1 division is 5 volts. So the, the trace which is correct must be 1 division. So this is showing a uh, fiber horizontal line here. This is wrong. It is showing more than one division. Fiber horizontal line here. It is wrong. It is showing more than one division. So the choices would be from C and D. Which trace is correct? Let me add here a simple question. Which trace is correct? The question here is missing. I'm just setting uh, the most possible question here. Which trace is correct?
This one will be wrong because the amplitude here is showing more than one more than one division. Yet the the y gain is showing five volts per division. Yet the what is given is five volts. So each division is five volts. So we just need one division. This is showing more than one division. This is showing more than one division. Then, are the frequencies fifty hertz? We can find the period. Uh, the period is going to be one over fifty. The period is one over fifty, so it means uh, the frequency. I mean, um, one divided by fifty. That is zero point zero two. The period is zero point zero two seconds. But remember. Period is the length representing one cycle times the time base setting, and the time base setting is 10 milliseconds per division. So let's find uh, L. So L is going to be 0 0.02 because this is in milliseconds. I will just divide this by 10 times 10 power negative 3. Uh, that is per division to find the number of divisions here. So that one divide by 10 exponent negative 3. That is two divisions. So the correct trace should have two divisions. So this is showing uh, two divisions for one cycle. That's what it means. So this is showing in, in two divisions, we have one, two, more than one cycle. So the correct answer is going to be this one. The amplitude is 5 volts, represented by one division. And the period is... Are represented by two divisions. So the correct answer is going to be D. In case the question is which trace is correct. Which trace is correct? That would be D. A wave motion is described by the oscillations of particles. What is the name given to the number of complete oscillations of a particle in one second? That is automatically a frequency. A displacement time graph for a transverse wave is shown in the diagram. The first difference between x and y can be represented as n lambda. What is the value of n? So let's find, we know first difference in terms of uh, pi is going to be 2 pi into x over wavelength. So let's just say the wavelength is lambda. Let's now find the distance between these two points. So this is the distance we want. Between x and this point, that is wavelength, and this is half wavelength. So this is wavelength. From here up to here it is wavelength. And from here it is half wavelength. So it means x is lambda plus a half lambda, which is 3 over 2 lambda. So it means this is going to be 2 pi into 3 lambda over 2 divided by lambda. And lambda cancels. So we have uh, 3 pi. 2 has cancelled out, so we remain with 3 pi radians. So our answer here is going to be 3. N must be 3. Continuous water waves are diffracted through a gap in a barrier in a ripple tank. Which change will cause the diffraction of the waves to increase? Which change will cause the diffraction of the waves to increase? Okay, so we know the fraction depends on the wavelength and the size of the gap. If these two are approximately the same, the fraction is maximum. Okay, A. Increase the frequency, that means we decrease the wavelength. The fraction reduces. Increasing the width of the gap, also the fraction reduces. We make the width larger. Reducing the wavelength of, of the waves. It is almost the same as that one because increasing the frequency means reducing the wavelength. Reducing the width of the gap. This would do increase diffraction because the wavelength of, uh, of water waves is, is relatively smaller. If we want diffraction to be more pronounced, then the width of the gap should also be smaller so that they are approximately the same order. The interference patterns interference patterns from a diffraction grating and a double slit are compared. Using the diffraction grating, yellow light of the first order, so small n is equal to 1, is seen at, at 30 degrees to the normal to the grating. Is seen at 30 degrees to the normal to the grating. Okay, so if this is the diffraction grating, the normal to the grating is going to be this one. 
and 30 degrees from the normal, 30 degrees to the normal will be the angle from, so theta is 30 degrees, this is the grating. The normal to the grating makes 90 degrees to the grating with the grating, which is that horizontal line. And 30 degrees to the normal is the angle from the horizontal line. The same light produces interference fringes on a screen one meter from the double slit. The slit separation is 500 times greater than the line spacing of the, dip, of the grating. What is the fringe separation? So let's start with a diffraction grating. For a diffraction grating, n lambda is equal to d sine of theta. n is 1, so I will say that 1 times uh, the wavelength. The wavelength is not known, I'll just leave it as lambda is equal to d. Um, The same light produces interference fringes on a screen one meter from the double slit. The slit separation of five is 500 times greater than line spacing. So let the line spacing here be D, then sine of, of 30. That is for the diffraction grating. For the double slit, here we know that for double slit, lambda is equal to AX divided by D. So the wavelength lambda is equal to A, the city separation is 5,500 times greater than the line spacing. So A is going to be 500 times D. So that is A. Then times X. X is not known. I'll just write there X. Then divide by, divide by, uh, divide by D, which is 1 meter. So D is 1 meter. So what is the fringe separation on the screen? So we want to find X. So I'll just substitute for lambda here. So lambda is going to be 500 D times X is equal to D sine 30. So I just make X the subject, D cancels out. So X is going to be sine of 30 divided by 500, which is 1 times 10 power negative 3, making our answer to be uh, precisely C. X is 1 times 10 power negative 3 meters, which is C. What may be used to produce stationary waves? Blowing air over the top of an empty tube. That is automatically correct. Loud sound near a mountain will not produce a stationary wave. Passing monochromatic light through a double slit does not produce a stationary wave. Passing water waves through a narrow slit, that one does not produce a stationary wave. Although these may produce interference patterns. What is the relationship between the intensity i and the amplitude of the wave? We know that intensity is directly proportion to amplitude squared. So it means intensity divided by amplitude squared is, is equal to what? A constant. So this is wrong. This is wrong. The answer is going to be A. I mean B. I over amplitude squared is a constant. An electromagnetic wave has frequency 10 power 8 hertz. In which region of the electromagnetic spectrum does the wave occur? So um, 10 power 8 hertz, we can check the wavelength. So wavelength is going to be speed, which is 3 times 10 power 8, divided by frequency, which is 10 power 8 hertz. So this is going to be 3 meters as the wavelength. That is automatically radio waves. So the answer here is going to be B. The graph represents a sinusoidal wave in the sea, traveling at a speed 8 meters per second. At one instant of time, sorry, at, uh, traveling at a speed of 80 meters per second at one instant of time. The maximum speed of the oscillating particles in the wave is 2, what is that? Is 2 times, is this, I hope this is times. 2 times AF. Let's hope. So where A is, the amplitude, and F is the frequency. So we have the displacement against position. An object P of mass 2 times 10 power, I don't know whether this is 6. I hope it is power 5, maybe. 2 times 10 power 5 kilograms floats on the, on the surface. 
what is the maximum kinetic energy of P due to the wave? Assume that its motion is vertical. So, of course, kinetic energy is going to be a half m v squared. So, they say the maximum speed of the oscillating particle in the wave is 2 times AF, where A is the amplitude. So, speed V is going to be 2 times the amplitude, which is 2 times the frequency, which is going to be The graph represents a sinusoid wave in the sea traveling at a speed of 80 meters per second. At one instant of time, the maximum speed of the oscillating particles in the wave is 2 times AF. Okay. Where A is the amplitude and F is the frequency. An object P of mass 2 times 10 power 5 kilograms floats on the surface. What is the maximum kinetic energy of P due to a wave, assuming that its motion is vertical? Okay. So the speed is 8 meters per second. That is the speed of the wave. Let's find the frequency. Let's find the frequency of the wave. So the wavelength here is, the wavelength is going to be 50. So the frequency from V equals to lambda F, the frequency of the wave is going to be V, which is 8, divided by the wavelength, which is 50. So V is 8 divided by 50. The wavelength is 0 0.16. So, I mean, the frequency is 0 0.16. 0 0.16 hertz if the wavelength is 50 and the speed is 80 meters per second then the frequency of the wave is 0 0.16 hertz the maximum speed of the oscillating particles in the wave is given by that so speed of the particle v of the particle is going to be 2 times 2 times the frequency which is 0 0.16 so 0 0.16 times 4 that is 0 0.64, so this is 0 0.64 meters per second, that's the speed of the particle. Now we want maximum kinetic energy. So a half times m times v squared, so that one squared times the mass, which is 2x, I hope this is correct, I couldn't see it clearly, 2 exponent 5, which is that one, then we divide this by 2, which is 40, 40 times 40, that is 40,960, 40,960. I think this must have been um, power negative 5, an object of mass 2 times 10 power 5. Something is wrong with this. With the units here. This is in the SI unit, so the frequency, this frequency is correct. The speed is two times, I hope the speed is two times AF. If this is multiplication, that would be correct. This would be fine. That is 4 times 0 0.16. This was 8 divided by 50. Because the wavelength here was 50, which is 0 0.16. So the kinetic energy, kinetic energy was 0 0.16. 64 squared 0 0.64 squared then times the mass I'm just skeptical about this the units of the mass 2 exponent I mean the power of 10 2 exponent 5 divided by 2 the power of 5 here I don't know 
is it negative 5 let me check 0 0.64 squared uh, then times the mass which is 2 exponent negative 5 then divide by 2 Perhaps it's power three. So this is zero point six four squared times two exponent three. Divide by two. Sorry. 0 0.64 squared times 2 exponent 3 divided by 2. So the problem is the power of 10 here of the mass, which is not very visible to, to it is not easy to detect. It's really not easy. So I'm getting four, and that is not in milli. Okay, let's check this again. Suppose this the question paper it was like that. That's why I'm trying to just guess, so that we can arrive at one of the most appropriate values here. So 0 0.64 squared times Two exponent two divided by two. So maybe it was exponent one, I guess. So zero point six four squared times the mass, which is two divided by two. 0 0.64 squared times 2 divided by 2 0 0.4 okay so it must have been a negative power maybe negative 2 negative 3 let's try negative 3 0 0.64 squared times 2 exponent negative 3 divided by 2 that is 4 so it must be uh, 4.0 times 10 power negative 4 we want uh, I think the most appropriate answer is 4 times 10 power negative 3 because the most appropriate value is most likely this but the power of the of 10 here is not very clear in the question paper so that is the challenge that is the challenge so if this is negative 3 negative uh, 2 negative 2 so this is 0 0.64 squared times 2 exponent negative 2 divided by 2. Yeah, that must have been negative 2, power of 10 there. So the answer is going to be this. So you change this to, this is this, this symbol was not very clear, but must have been negative 2. Okay, sorry for that delay, but all it leads to the same, to the correct answer. So the answer is going to be B. Monochromatic light illuminates two narrow parallel slits. The interference pattern which results is observed on a string some distance beyond the slits. Which change increases the separation between the darker lines of the interference pattern? So it is two narrow slits. That is double slit. Lambda is equal to AX divided by D. Okay. So it means lambda times d is equal to ax. We want x to be higher. 
we either increase lambda, increase D, or decrease A, because X is directly proportional to lambda, it is directly proportional to D, it is inversely proportional to A. So which change increases the separation between the darker lines of the interference pattern? Separation between the darker lines of the interference pattern, number one. Decreasing the distance between the screen and the slits, making this smaller. That one does not increase. Increase the distance between the slits, making A bigger. That one does not. Increase monochromatic, using monochromatic light of higher frequency. When frequency is higher, wavelength is lower. That means we have decreased uh, the wavelength. And when we decrease the wavelength, then it means x decreases. Use monochromatic light of longer wavelength. So the answer is going to be d. When lambda is la higher, the, when lambda is higher, x is higher. The narrow beam of monochromatic light is incident normally on a diffraction grating. The third order, that is n equals 3, third order diffracted beams are formed at angles of 45 degrees to the original direction. What is the highest order of the diffraction beam produced by this grating? So n lambda is equal to d sine theta. Let's first find the wavelength. So when n is 3, the wavelength is lambda. D is um, D is not known. I'll just write it as D sine of uh, 45 degrees. Okay. Then, um, what is the highest order of diffraction being produced by this grating? So, for high order, sine theta is equal to 1. So, it means N times lambda, which is not known, should be equal to D sine theta, but sine theta is equal to 1 for n maximum. So n maximum times lambda should be equal to d. Now we just combine the two equations. Where there is d, I'll put there n max times lambda in this equation here. So I have that 3 times lambda is equal to where there is d, I'm putting n maximum times wavelength sine of 45. So wavelength cancels out. So it means the maximum value of n, n max, is going to be 3 divided by sine 45. 3 divided by sine 45. That is 4 point something, so we round off this to 4. So this is going to be 4. So what is the highest order of diffraction beam produced by this grating? The highest order. Not the total number of orders, but the highest order is n equals to 4. So this means our answer is going to be B. It can't be 50th because 50th it means you are adding the four orders plus the central. It cannot even be 60th. It can't be third. Light can exhibit all of the properties listed. Which property can sound not exhibit? Sound cannot show polarization. The diagram represents the screen of a CRO displaying two sound waves labeled X and Y. What is the ratio intensity of sound wave X over intensity of sound wave Y? Remember, intensity is directly proportional to amplitude squared. So if the amplitude of Y is represented by one box, the amplitude of X is represented by three boxes. So it means amplitude of X is three times amplitude of Y. So if this is A. So for X, intensity of X is going to be equal to a constant times A squared then intensity of y is going to be equal to a constant where there is amplitude is three times that of, no, this is y. That is y, this is x. For x, it is three times that of y, so this is going to be three times a, where this is squared. Now we get the reciprocal. So intensity of x over intensity of y is going to be 9a squared, Divide by uh, divide by a squared, which makes the ratio to be a nine over one. So this is nine divided by one. The diagram shows two loudspeakers. So by the way, the answer here is going to be a. Hope I circled the previous answer. Yes. 
The diagram shows two loudspeakers producing sound waves that are in phase. A student, as a student moves from X to Y, the intensity of the note she hears alternately, alternately loud and quiet. The distance between adjacent loud and quiet regions may be reduced by the distance between uh, adjacent loud and quiet regions, that is x. So lambda is equal to a x divided by d. We want to reduce that. Lambda times d is equal to a times x. To make x smaller, either lambda is smaller or d is smaller or is higher. So decrease distance d. D is the distance between the sources that is equivalent to a. So that one is when we decrease that distance, uh, when we make a smaller, x is going to be greater. So that's wrong. Increase distance L. L is like capital D, distance between the source and the screen. When we increase L, we also increase x, yet we want it to be decreased. Decreasing the amplitude, that one only affects intensity. Increase the frequency. Frequency is inversely proportional to wavelength. Make frequency larger, reduce the wavelength. And when the wavelength is reduced, x is reduced. So the answer is going to be D. The diagram shows an oscilloscope screen displaying two signals. It's almost a repetition. Signal X has frequency 50 Hz and a peak voltage of 12 volts. So you see they are meeting at these points, so they must be having the same frequency and therefore they have the same period. Okay? But we can find the, uh, the period. Period is 1 over 50 which is uh, 1 divided by 50, period is 20 milliseconds, so C and D are wrong. Then the peak voltage, signal X has a frequency 50 and peak voltage 12 volts. So you see that the amplitude of this, of X is 3 times. Amplitude of X is 3 times amplitude of Y. So if x is 12, this is 3 times amplitude of y, so amplitude of y is going to be 4. So what is the period and the peak voltage of signal y? So amplitude of y is 4, so the answer is going to be a. The order of, diffraction, the order of magnitude of the frequency of the longest wavelength ultraviolet waves can be expressed as 10 power x. Ultraviolet. Ruminera's mother is visiting Uncle Xavier's garden. So ultraviolet is just after violet, and violet is 4 times 10 power negative 7 meters. That means ultraviolet is most like a 10 power negative 8 meters. That is because here wavelength is going to be smaller, this side. So wavelength is about 10 power negative 8 meters. The order, so we can now find frequency. So frequency is going to be speed, which is 10 power 8, divided by, that is 3 times 10 power 8, divided by wavelength, which is 10 power negative 8. Okay. So um, if we say a violet is, let's say, let's choose a number such as 2 times 10 power negative 8. Now I will just divide. So 3 exponent 8 divided by 2 exponent negative 8. So that is 1.5 times 10 power. They said the longest wavelength ultraviolet. The longest wavelength ultraviolet. Oh, the longest must be closer to violet, so I can say power negative 7 approximately. It can be 1 times 10 power negative 7, 2 times 10 power negative 7, because at the smallest value in the visible range is 4 times 10 power negative 7. So anything less than 4 can be ultraviolet. So this is going to give us, of course, 1.5 times 10 power. This gives us 10 power 15 meters. I mean hertz. So the frequency here is going to be of the order 10 power 15 hertz. Okay. That is for the longest wavelength because it ranges from 10 power negative 7 to around 10 power negative 9. 
So the longest is between 10 to the power negative 7, close 10 to the power negative 7. The light from two lasers passes through a vacuum. One laser emits red, the other emits green. Which property of the two laser beams must be different? You know, V is equal to lambda times F. Speed is going to be the same. So it can't be different because they are all light. Plane of polarization, uh, this will be the same. Which property of the two laser beams must be different? Uh, the amplitude could be the same. They will all be vary in frequency because they are varying in wavelength. So the answer is going to be B. And lastly, a parallel beam of light of wavelength 450 nanometers falls normal on a diffraction grating which has 300 lines per millimeter. What is the total number? Total. So we know for a diffraction grating, N lambda is equal to D sine theta. And sine theta is going to be equal to 1 when N is maximum. So N maximum is going to be D. Uh, D is not a given, but remember D is equal to 1 over N, which is number of lines per meter. This one is number of lines per millimeter, so it becomes 300,000 lines per meter. You multiply by 1,000. So this is going to be N maximum is going to be equal to N maximum times lambda is equal to D, which is 1 over N, that is 300,000. So N maximum is going to be 1 divided by, wavelength is 450 times 10 power negative 9 times 300,000. So we have uh, 450 exponent negative 9 times 300,000, 1 divided by the answer, that gives us 7. So the maximum order is 7. That is maximum order, N maximum. But we want the total number of transmitted maxima. So we have 7 up and 7 below, then plus the central bright fringe, which gives us a total of 15. Note this very carefully. We have 7 up, 7 below, plus the central bright fringe, which gives us a total of 15. So the answer is going to be D. Note very carefully that if this is the diffraction grating and this is the screen, there's a central bright fringe, zero order, then the total, the total order, uh, the maximum order up is n equals to 7, there will be also n equals to 7 below, so plus this one here. So 7 plus this one plus this one gives us a total of 15. Oh, that marks the end of waves, it has been long. And but it will not be it is not longer than electricity. Our next unit will be uh, electricity and DC circuits, where we shall see Kirchhoff's laws and so on and so forth. I hope this was enriching. You must have learned uh, one or two things from these videos of waves, and you must have gained some confidence by now. And I wish you the best. Bye bye.